For nearly 60 years, hundreds of actors have gone boldly into the final frontier on the big and small screens. These are just some of the Star Trek performers who have passed on to the great beyond. One of the most underrated duos in Star Trek history were sisters Lorsa and Bator. They were a pair of villains you could still root for as they tried to break free of the patriarchal norms in Klingon society. Bator was played by Gwyneth Walsh, while Lorsa was brought to life by Barbara March. When March wasn't wearing Klingon makeup, she was a deeply talented, multifaceted artist who was known for her stage acting, playwriting, and poetry. She portrayed characters like Lady Macbeth and wrote a novella called The Copper People. In 2019, her husband revealed on Facebook that the retired Klingon warrior had passed on to the next realm at the age of 65 after being diagnosed with cancer. Yvonne Craig's most iconic role was almost surely Batgirl, whom she played on the classic live-action 60s TV show. She also made guest appearances on a number of other series, including the Star Trek episode Whom Gods Destroy. She played Marta, an imprisoned, green-skinned Orion woman. Marta didn't last long before she was double-crossed and killed, but the eternal meme of Captain Kirk seducing a green-skinned alien was born with this episode. That notion is actually somewhat inaccurate, though, as Marta is the one who seduces Kirk, and only for the purpose of stabbing him. I would have told him anything to save you from that torment. Before playing Batgirl and Marta, Craig was a professional ballet dancer. She eventually made a career switch to real estate, although in the 2010s she did turn in a few voice acting performances. Sadly, that same decade, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, which then spread to her liver. She died in 2015 at the age of 78. Gregory Itzen was known to many TV viewers as the villainous President Logan on 24, but sci-fi fans are probably more familiar with his work as a recurring guest star on multiple Star Trek series. He was set to make an appearance on the first season of The Next Generation, but he passed it up for another show, a decision he later regretted. But he eventually turned up in the franchise starting with Deep Space Nine. He then later guest-starred as different characters on both Voyager and Enterprise as well. In addition to Trek and 24, Itzen was all over TV screens in the 90s and early 2000s, with guest spots on such popular shows as Quantum Leap and Friends. And his film work spanned decades, including the 1980 spoof Airplane and the 2012 biopic Lincoln. Itzen died on July 7, 2022, after an emergency surgery. He was 74 years old. Few Star Trek characters were as groundbreaking as Lieutenant Uhura, who was played unforgettably by Nichelle Nichols. She inspired legions of viewers, including a young Whoopi Goldberg, who eventually went on to befriend Nichols and join the Trek franchise herself. Nichols' fans also included civil rights activist Martin Luther King Jr., who told her that his family loved her work on Star Trek. When she mentioned that she intended to leave the show, he urged her to reconsider and show viewers that black people could be much more than stereotypical servants. There is no one like him, and, and everyone who knew him uh, loved him the same way. In 1977, Nichols took advantage of her sci-fi cred and began working with NASA to encourage women and people of color to sign up as astronauts. The space agency reportedly credited her for encouraging thousands of diverse astronaut candidates including Sally Ride, the first American woman in space. After a long career that included roles on Broadway, Nichols died of heart failure on July 30th, 2022, at the age of 89. If you're looking for a truly terrifying Star Trek villain, then look no further than David Warner as Gol Madred. As seen in the Next Generation two-parter Chain of Command, Madred is in charge of torturing a captured Captain Picard. Warner manages to be chilling while mostly sitting behind a desk a testament to the actor's towering talent. Warner actually popped up multiple times in the Star Trek franchise, including Star Trek V The Final Frontier as Ambassador St. John Talbot and Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country as the Klingon Chancellor Gorkin. Warner's other big screen credits included the devious Spicer Lovejoy in Titanic and the doomed Keith Jennings in the classic horror film The Omen. He also graced the stage in a number of productions by the Royal Shakespeare Company. He died on July 24, 2022, at the age of 80, of complications from cancer. Kirstie Alley was only part of Star Trek for a single movie, but she enjoyed quite the legacy for that role. She played Lieutenant Savick, the new Vulcan officer who debuted in 1982's Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. 
However, she declined to return as Savick in future films, as she reportedly wasn't offered enough money. Nevertheless, Ali went on to have a long and storied career in plenty of other films and TV shows. Most notable, of course, was Rebecca Howe on the mega-hit sitcom Cheers, which won her an Emmy. Her big screen work included Look Who's Talking as the mother of an infant voiced by Bruce Willis and the beauty pageant mockumentary Drop Dead Gorgeous. She died of cancer on December 5, 2022, at the age of 71. At the time of her death on September 7, 2022, Marsha Hunt was referred to in many obituaries as the oldest living Star Trek actor, as she made it to the age of 104. She appeared in the Next Generation episode Too Short a Season as Ann Jameson, wife of Admiral Mark Jameson. Hunt's acting career began prolifically in early Hollywood, but then she ran afoul of the House Un-American Activities Committee. Though she only ever protested the committee and was never a known communist, her refusal to apologize for supporting civil liberties put her squarely on the blacklist. Though her career later picked back up on television, Hunt took the lull as an opportunity to travel and become more socially engaged. She eventually became an activist who supported the World Health Organization, defended refugees, and aided unhoused people. I wanted the greatest variety of roles that I could be given, and thank God they gave them to me. Kenneth Walsh made his Star Trek debut rather late in his career, popping up on season three of Discovery as Admiral Senatal. Fellow Trek actor Patrick Cook Chun fondly recalled Welch's intelligence and humor from the time they worked together on a 2009 play. On Discovery, Admiral Tall was part of a significant storyline involving a Trill symbiont species and some possible surprises about Starfleet. Welsh died of cancer on May 5, 2022 at the age of 80. He was also well-remembered for his villainous turn on Twin Peaks as former FBI agent Earl. And history nerds will surely remember the time that he played Thomas Edison, as well as President Harry Truman, the latter of whom he portrayed on two separate occasions. On the big screen, he played the vice president in the disaster flick The Day After Tomorrow. He also spent a great amount of time on stage, especially in Canadian productions, such as the Shakespeare-centric Stratford Festival. Though Robert Walker Jr. only made one appearance in the very first season of the very first Star Trek series, it's hard to forget him. That's because he played the title character in the second episode, Charlie X. Young Charlie was an isolated teenager picked up by the crew of the Enterprise, and he was no ordinary teen, as he had some seriously frightening powers that were brought to life with dramatic lighting effects. Don't push me. Walker died at the age of 79 on December 5, 2019. He was also known for appearing in the 1969 film Easy Rider and a slew of classic TV shows, including guest spots on Bonanza, The Six Million Dollar Man, and Columbo. Perhaps he had a bit of a leg up in showbiz, as both of his parents, Robert Walker and Jennifer Jones, were actors, while his stepdad was movie executive David O. Selznick. With the big cinematic franchise reboot of Star Trek in 2009, many of the core roles were necessarily recast. Sure, Leonard Nimoy made a very special guest appearance, but that was clearly the exception rather than the rule. The role of Sarek, Spock's stern Vulcan father, was first brought to life by Mark Leonard in the original series. But then British actor Ben Cross took over the part for the reboot. In addition to his time in the Trek franchise, Cross memorably starred in the 1981 sports drama Chariots of Fire. Before all that, he was a member of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art and made waves as a stage actor, joining the companies of West End musicals like the London production of Chicago. He died of cancer at the age of 72 on August 18, 2020. Mark Margolis may have only been on one episode of Star Trek, but it was quite the memorable performance. He played Dr. Nell Apgar, the prickly head of a research station featured in the Next Generation Season 3 episode, A Matter of Perspective. Apgar's death kicks off the story, which sees Commander Riker accused of murder and a retelling of the incident from multiple perspectives. In the ensuing investigation, a holographic version of Apgar plays out those various accounts, though he's hardly cuddly even in the most sympathetic takes. What are you going to put in your report, Riker? Margolis didn't exactly become a superstar on the strength of that single episode, but he definitely garnered a fair amount of attention later in his career. That was mostly thanks to his turn as drug lord Hector Salamanca on Breaking Bad and its spin-off series Better Call Saul. His performance was all the more notable considering that Salamanca had lost the ability to speak by the events of Breaking Bad. 
Margolis's big screen credits included the likes of Scarface and Ace Ventura Pet Detective. He died on August 3, 2023, at the age of 83 in New York City after a brief illness. Star Trek fans are most likely to know Annie Wershing from her striking turn as the menacing yet isolated Borg Queen on Season 2 of Picard. But this wasn't her first stint in the franchise, as she also had a guest appearance on a 2002 episode of Enterprise. As she told Star Trek Explorer in 2022, that was actually her introduction to the franchise, as she wasn't really a fan while growing up. But after being cast as the Borg Queen, she dove into the lore of the series and the work of previous Borg Queen actors before making her own mark on the role. Wershing died at the age of 45 of cancer on January 29, 2023. In addition to Trek, her TV credits included Vampire Diaries and 24. She was also a voice actor for the video game The Last of Us as the character Tess. Star Trek fans surely recognize Gary Graham as Soval, the Vulcan ambassador to Earth who appeared on Enterprise. Soval served as a bit of an antagonist to the lead character, Captain Archer, who was played by Scott Bakula. Graham had already made his way to the Trek franchise before Enterprise, having appeared in a one-off role on a Season 2 episode of Voyager. Graham's sci-fi work wasn't limited to the Trek franchise, as he also starred on the Alien Nation series that aired for one season from 1989 to 1990. He played human detective Matthew Sykes, who solved mysteries alongside an extraterrestrial refugee. The franchise was successful enough for Graham to reprise the role in five follow-up films. He also appeared in other notable TV shows like The Dukes of Hazzard and Starsky and & Hutch. Graham was still acting when his ex-wife Susan announced his death on Facebook on January 23, 2024, at the age of 73. She spoke fondly of his showbiz work and his devotion to being a father to their daughter. His current wife, Becky, revealed to The Hollywood Reporter that he died of cardiac arrest while in a hospital in Spokane, Washington. <laughs>